Hello everyone! Here I am, still in the couch of my place, ready to take you in a virtual tour. Even if we are all stuck home, it doesn't mean that we have to stop our heads from dreaming of traveling. This is my job and this is my mission. I'm official tour guide of my own city, Florence, and my duty is the one to let you fall in love with our treasures. So guys, let's start! I want to take you today in one of my favorite spots in town, a secret passage, the Vasari Corridor. But before to get inside it, let's have a little chat starting by the historical context. It was the 1500 when the power of Tuscany was totally under control of the Medici family. They were first wool merchants, then bankers, and this is how they became extremely wealthy. They mixed their blood with some of of the most influent houses of Europe. Just think of the two ladies of the family that became queens of France or the boys of the family that became popes. Their power in Florence and Tuscany though became official just in the 16th century with Cosimo I of the Medici family. He was first elected duke and then later finally Grand Duke. A noble title that was actually invented for him. He gained so much power thanks to the right friends that he chose, the emperor on his side and the pope on the other. To guarantee a royal future to his family, Cosimo married an important, rich and beautiful woman, daughter of the vice king of Naples and Spain. Her name was Eleonora from Toledo. Cosimo found an appropriate house for them to live, a building that could immediately show the power of the family Palazzo della Signoria, the old government building. The Spanish noble bride, though, she found the place too old, small, medieval. So she decided to buy a new house for the family. With her own money from Spain, she bought the Pitti Palace just across the river. She loved this place more than the other because of its garden. An entire hill that still today is called by us as Baboli. You know what we say, right? Happy wife? Well, Cosimo and Eleonore moved in Pitti Palace in 1560. The place was beautiful, but the Grand Duke had a big inconvenience. Every day he had to cross the whole city to go to work. In those years in which he was living in Piazza della Signoria, Cosimo ordered the construction of a new building as an office to manage the economy and the politic of Florence, the Uffizi. Its name belonged to his function. The word offices in Italian is Uffici, but in the old Italian was Uffizi. When the Grand Duke was still living in Palazzo della Signoria, he also linked his house to his office with his arch to simply walk from a place to the other without being noticed. Now that he was living in Pitti Palace, across the river, he had to walk through the bridge every single day. I'm talking about Ponte Vecchio, one of the icons of this city. Original since the 1300. Even if it looks so pretty, back at that time those shops and houses were all occupied by butchers and fishermen and it stayed like that until the 16th century. Imagine the bad smells around there, the waste, the blood, knives. It was not definitely the best place for a Medici to walk through. Cosimo found a solution in 1565, commissioning the construction of this secret corridor to link his house to his office. The inspiration came from Rome, from that secret passage that link St. Peter to St. Angel Castle, a clever passetto to save the Pope from any enemy attack. Not casually, the request of the corridor arrived in 1565. Something special was gonna happen here in Florence. The first son of Cosimo and Eleonora, Francesco, was going to marry the daughter of the Emperor, Giovanna from Austria. This was a real special event to which a lot of special people were going to participate. And Cosimo wanted to make sure that the whole participants were going to understand his power and the one of his family. The idea of the corridor arrived in March 1565. 
the wedding was going to be celebrated at the end of the same year. In only five months, it was all built, one kilometer of secret passage. The architect that projected and built it was Giorgio Vasari. That's why the corridor is called like that, the Vasari Corridor. It's not secret in the way you might think. It's actually a skywalk that goes on top of the heads of the Florentine without they could actually notice it. It starts from the second floor of the Uffizi after a beautiful staircase in the thickness of a building. The corridor then pop up outside, moving on top of arches along the river to then finally turn on top of the bridge, right on top of the whole butcher stores. The view you get from the windows here is stunning. The round windows are original, but those three at the center of the bridge are not. They were opened by order of Mussolini that in 1939 invited Hitler for a walk in here. Well, besides everything, I can only say that being here is a real special experience. A lot in the bridge was changed to allow the construction of this corridor. Since Middle Ages, a lot of towers were on the bridge. For the majority, they were bought by the Medici and then destroyed. Only one survived and gave tough times to the architect Vasari and Cosimo as well. I'm talking about Manelli's tower. Manelli were not friends of the Medici, they were actually competitors. Cosimo tried a few times to buy their house, but they always refused. This is why, if you walk on the bridge, you can notice that the corridor doesn't go straight, but it goes around the tower. The part of the corridor right after it has been rebuilt after World War II. It's true. This bridge was the only one to survive to the Nazis' bomb attack in 1944. This is why the name is Ponte Vecchio, the old bridge. But still, the Nazis destroyed the two sides of it to avoid partisans to still walk from a side to the other of the city. From here on, the corridor goes inside buildings that he finds on his way, through towers, houses, also a church. This is also visible from the outside. This is the facade of Santa Felicita Church. The family had a balcony that from the corridor was looking right inside it. They could easily go to attend their services from their house to here. Cool, right? It then continues in direction of Pitti Palace and it has two exits. One is in the Boboli Garden, the other one instead directly inside the palace. Since the 70s of the 1900, the corridor was keeping one of the oldest collection of self-portrait of artists from all over the world. I'm thinking of Giorgio Vasari, Raphael, Dürer, Bernini, Peter Paul Rubens, Velázquez, Rosalba Carriera, Jacques-Louis David and Canova. Silvestro Lega, Giovanni Fattori, Karl Larsen, John Singer Sargent, Galileo Chini, Giacomo Balla, Ottone Rosai, Giorgio De Chirico, Renato Guttuso, Marc Chagall, Siqueiros, Rauschenberg, Bill Viola, and so on. The majority of the pictures I use for this video are pictures that I took some years ago inside the corridor. Since 2016, the Vasari corridor is closed due to restoration and it will reopen next year. The huge collection of self-portrait has been moved to another wing of the Uffizi. For those of you that don't know it, Uffizi is today the main painting museum of my city and is one of the most important in the whole world for Renaissance paintings. Well guys, I hope you enjoy this virtual tour with me Hopefully soon we will make it real. For now, let's just stay home, be safe, and stay tuned.